Hello everyone, this is a work through uh, showing you how you might set up or work through your homework uh, types of problems that will be in your homework for activity based costing. Um, again, there's there's not a, one correct way of doing it to setting this up. Uh, this is a way that hopefully is easy to follow uh, and might be helpful for you. Uh, so we're going to jump in here and do the problem as if there was a single cost driver, a plant-wide overhead rate, uh, the terminology used in your textbook. Okay, So we're going to run through the steps as given in our PowerPoint uh, presentation in an earlier video. Uh, so we've got the, we're going to estimate overhead for the upcoming year. So we broke it. We went through and calculated up our costs, various pieces of the cost. But what we're really, because we're only going to do one overhead rate, we're just really going to put it all in one overhead uh, bin or pile. 995,100. That is our what we're really focused on because we're just going to do one rate. So we don't, while this was helpful to make sure we didn't miss something, it's not necessary for this stage of the problem at this point. We pick one then cost driver and we decided that direct labor hours might be the best one. Okay, and so our predetermined overhead rate is the 995,100 divided by $47,021.17 $21 per direct labor hour. Okay, so we have some other information that will help us make some entries to see kind of the flow that go along. We got our direct costs, we've got uh, some overhead costs paid, and we've got some uh, the sale of a job. We're, so we're going to focus on just one job. Um, if you were doing this with products, we'd be focused on just one product. Obviously, and typically, we're going to have more than one job or more than one product, uh, and therefore, we'd have them going at the same time. But to be able to focus and to demonstrate it, we'll just show one job. So we bought some materials like we learned uh, in Chapter 1. We're going to debit raw materials, credit accounts, and wages payable. We're going to then use those raw materials, 71000 on that job. Remember, we identified those as directly on that job or direct materials for that particular product if it was a product scenario okay and then our labor goes directly into work in process for that job or for that product or for that department so that's our two direct costs direct materials direct labor now we're going to allocate our overhead we know that it's allocated using direct labor hours, and we use 10,500 hours on this job. This may be early in the year. This may be a monthly allocation, uh, or it may just have been at the, when we finish the job. Okay, so we're going to take the 2117 times 10,500 debit working process credit factor overhead. We've got this other factor overhead costs that were paid or this shows that they're still owed. Uh, technically, if it was paid, it would be a credit to cash. But to simplify things, we'll just put it in accounts, wages payable. Uh, then we know that our jobs, A, total cost is direct labor, direct, mater direct materials, direct labor, overhead. We've got all the costs involved. We're finished. 524, 285 total costs. We move that to finished goods or we can skip it and go right to cost of goods sold because we know that that job a has been sold for seven hundred fifty thousand. we're going to reduce job a to zero and we're going to include that in cost of goods sold for our month year whatever period of time we're using and our sales our credit sales debit accounts receivable no no if the it was sold on credit just to see the full picture of how we work through a problem using this process. So this is just one overhead rate. Now let's go to activity-based costing example. What if we did this using 
uh, more cost pools than just one. Okay, so note carefully that this is the same overhead cost as before. So we would do it one way or the other. This is not new overhead costs. This is not uh, a different scenario. This is the same cost, but instead of just adding them up into one lump, you know, particular uh, cost pool, we're going to break it into three cost pools. One for setup cost pool with those two. What? Second cost pool for maintenance for those two, and then everything else. Notice the total is exactly the same. Okay, we've just broken it into three cost pools. We could more, even more carefully break the utilities, maybe into setups, maintenance, and other as well, but we chose not to in this scenario. Okay, again, we're estimating, we have to decide how much extra work is going to be justified to get the extra information we want okay we still have our direct materials purchased and used we have our direct labor used in job a okay just like before so the direct costs are not ch changed by how many cost pools you use but because we have three cost pools we need three cost drivers one for the setups, one for the maintenance, one for the other. Okay, and we're gonna ask and decide that the number of setups is a good one, good cost driver for the setups pool, cost pool, number of machine hours for the maintenance cost pool, and then we'll just use direct labor hours for the other uh, because that's what we did in our early example. It seems like it's a reasonable uh, assumption. So setups are going to be the total cost of the setups cost pool divide estimated divided by the estimated number of setups 102.24 we do the same thing maintenance divided by the number of machine hours six dollars and 31 cents per machine hour and then ten dollars and seventy cents per direct labor hour for the other 503 divided by forty seven thousand Notice that I am very careful to label my predetermined overhead rates because we now are working with more than one. It's probably a really good idea to make sure you put, you understand this is per setup, this is per machine hour, this is per direct labor hour. So now we need to know a little more information about job A, which comes back to the idea that cost drivers have to be something that we can measure relatively easily. So we can count how many setups we have 30 setups in job A, and so our cost or overhead allocated to job A because of setups is 102.24 times 30, or 3,067 rounded. Our machine hours for job A, again, we can track how many machine hours relatively easily, typically, were used on job A, 6,200 times $6.31, 39,122. And then finally, we know that there were 10,500 hours, direct labor hours, times the $10.70 to get the 112,372. Okay? Now, it's optional, but I like to do this I like to create, create, if I'm going to use multiple cost pools, to create a, an account for each cost pool. So I have my factor overhead account for setups, factor overhead account for maintenance, factor overhead for other. So when I pay for factory overhead costs, I need to identify them as either setup costs, maintenance costs, or overhead. And I did that here. Okay, so instead of just one 362 like we did before, we're going to break it in 122, 96, and 144 and put it in their respective accounts. And when I allocate it, I'm going to credit that particular account to make it go into job A. Credit, credit goes in there.
okay? Again, you can just do it all in one factory overhead account. Many companies do, but I think it's easier to see and analyze and look for if you break it into different accounts as well. So with the different allocation, we came up with a different total cost for job A, which is exactly what we reason why we're doing it. We think this is a better idea of how much cost actually went into job A. We know it's all an estimate. We know that we don't know exactly what's happening with indirect costs, but we determined that this is, or think that this is a better way to measure what it costs us to build job A. So job A goes to cost of goods sold, just like it did in our earlier example skipping over fix, uh, finished goods because it's a, a job costing scenario. And of course, sales account receivable is not affected by it. Okay, so the only thing that are different is the fact that you have three overhead, you have three overhead accounts uh, or may if you choose, and then you have this extra calculation that is done here in the middle. So that gives you an idea of how you might set it up and compare and contrast to one predetermined overhead rate to three predetermined overheads and three cost pools.